Let's start our render optimization from the very basic setup. I have the default settings, nothing has changed. So when we open cinema and there is the default settings. So we need to get the first time of render, the starting points. For example, in this scene, we get about 20 some seconds. The first option we need to test is to enable hardware ray tracing, if available. I hope everyone has RTX cards and it can boost your render time immediately or cannot. So you need to enable this option and to check the render time. It will use optics library and optics conversion of material. And now we have 18 seconds instead of 20 plus. Great improvement just with single option enabling. The next fast improvement of render is going to advance it system folder and increasing bucket size. It depends on the video memory of your card, but usually you can easily up from 128 to 256. Just get real improvements. As you see with this huge bucket, we have more than 50% of speed improvement. Just imagine that only enabling RTX and bumping up the bucket size speed up from 20 seconds to 11 seconds. I think it's already a great result, but we will go further. Checking and comparing the render time is very important because it can either boost the speed time or slow down. It really high scene dependent approach. Threshold is major thing that control the speed and noise quality of your render. Increasing threshold will bring more noise, but you need to check by your eyes, maybe with your client, maybe doing some test viewing on desktop or maybe mobile screen to check if there noticeable difference between different settings. I set to 0 0.02, we got 11 seconds and now I think we get some more, 7 seconds, huge improvement and without noticeable difference in noise level. The next option you might try is using denoising, sometimes it can improve the quality of your image but brings a lot of render time. For example, optics is very fast, it's powered by Nvidia and you see it gets some additional milliseconds. But uh, the key feature is that you can up the result to a higher value and keep the same level of resulting image. But be aware that denoising is killing a lot of details, especially in bumps and high detailed textures. You can use Odin denoiser, I think it's Intel based, but it gets a lot of time. It requires a lot of time. The Altos bring additional time in post-processing beauty, but produce clean image. So it's up to you. For still shots, you can use denoising, but be careful with losing details. If you need to show the fast sketch to client to speed up your workflow, it's a good tool to use. A few times I faced the situation when decreasing the threshold value brings much more clear result in a fewer time than using a denoising option. In this particular case, we have pretty the same time with decreasing threshold or with default threshold and using denoise option. We need to remember that the lower value of result will get and produce much cleaner result with low level noise. But sometimes the difference is not very noticeable, but you can save a lot of time, especially if you're rendering a huge sequence. For example, decreasing result now will produce less than eight or even seven seconds. Great result, but not a huge drop down in quality of our render. I recommend to use higher result level while doing some test renders, maybe some sketches or testing some ideas, not to spending time on these tests. Hardware ray trace tracing is very simple to be enabled and checked if it gain render or slow down it. Increasing bucket size is a good if you have a single card, but if you have multiple GPU setup, you need to check the lower bucket technique because sometimes there are some segments insane that are very hard to be rendered and you can face situation when one card is stuck and all other are chilling 
because they rendered their part. So be aware and don't forget to check the lowering bucket size in your scene and with your multiple GPU setup. The last option for fast optimizing is playing with combined depth and reflection refraction depth. For example, if we decrease combined depth to 1, we get a very fast render, but we lose some details in reflection and refraction. Unfold this section, and here we see the global illumination, reflection, refraction, and volume. The combined depth is trying to optimize in every specific point number of these rays. Increasing the combined depth will bring some reflection and refraction in our torus. The more we get, the higher number of rays in one point we will see in render. I disable global illumination to see immediately the update of our IPR, increasing combined depth, and we see that there are more reflection and refractive elements in our glass material, but it produces additional time in render. Increasing combined depth to higher value sometimes can bring nothing into render, nothing noticeable, but maybe small details, but increase the render time much. So you need to find the balance between combined depth, reflection, refraction, and the image quality. With current high value of combined depth, reflection, and refraction, we should get a much higher render time. Not 7 seconds, but almost 13 seconds. Resetting to default, waiting scene to be rendered, and go back then less than 7 seconds. Most of scenes I am rendering with default settings, but I always checking the cutting one value from combined depth, reflection and refraction. Not noticeable result in the render, but we have less than 5 seconds render time as a result. I think not a bad thing. Increasing reflection, we can see that there is small additional layer and you need to make a peak. Do you need this in your render or not? So these sliders are very effective in optimizing your render settings. Another technique, the reflection and refraction are set to default, right click, reset to default, and cutting the value of 1 from combined depth, not 6, but 5 or maybe 4. And usually it brings almost the same quality of render with all that passes with sliding, cutting some reflection or refraction with no crucial change in overall appealing. We're now testing on very high values of the result and not full frames, but every seconds and milliseconds that we can cut from a single frame will save us a lot of minutes and maybe hours if you need a huge sequence to be rendered. Let's summarize. Result, RTX, combined depth, and don't forget to go to advanced settings, to system, and check what bucket size is efficient with your scene. That's all the fast tricks and methods you can use to speed up your render time.